Welcome. My name is William J. Rothwell. You can call me Bill. And I'm delighted today to be talking to you about the high performance workplace, which we can simply abbreviate as the HPW. Now, what is the HPW? Well, the HPW is a workplace where the organization's culture is so tightly aligned with worker, worker engagement and worker goals and feelings that the two are in tight alignment. And what that means is that workers then are encouraged to perform to peak productivity. So how do we go about creating a high performance workplace? And given today's uh, highly competitive world, where many nations and many companies are jockeying for competitive advantage, the HPW is quite important because if workers are more productive, the organization can be more successful. But how do we go about creating an HPW? Well, I like to say there are two ways we can investigate the HPW, the descriptive approach and the prescriptive approach. Descriptive focuses on one organization. The prescriptive approach looks at information drawn across many organizations and compares to one specific organizational setting. So in the descriptive approach, we might do something like identify the organization's top performers. And we could do that by looking at our performance management data and finding out in every job category who are the most productive workers. And then call them together in focus groups, usually one hour each for each focus group, and then ask them just two simple questions. The first question would be, what are the barriers that the company or other people create that get in the way of your peak productivity? What keeps you from being more productive? That's the first question. And the second question is, what could be done to knock down the barriers that keep you from being productive, maximally productive. And when the results come in, they could be analyzed and we would be able to identify the top 10 things to do to improve the organization's level of productivity and move us nearer to creating an HPW. So that would be the descriptive approach. The prescriptive approach would be based on research that's already been conducted and such research has been conducted on what it takes to create an HPW. In one research study, the researchers analyzed the business literature and identified companies that were identified in print in the business literature as being the most productive workplaces. And they had to be mentioned three times in three different uh, places to qualify. The result of that study was the identification of 27 companies that had been identified as the most productive workplaces. And then the researchers took field trips to those 27 companies and interviewed representatives of management and workers in each company and asked them, why do you think your company was identified as a high performance workplace? The results of those interviews were then analyzed and boiled down to eight major categories. Those categories were training and continuous learning, information sharing, employee participation, 
organizational structure, worker management partnerships, compensation linked to performance and skills, employment security, and a supportive work environment. So those were the eight categories. Under those categories were 55 criteria. Now a cri criterion represents a standard, a description of what should be uh, a a goal to be achieved in an organization. Um, and, but 55 seems like a difficult number to work with if you're trying to bring your company into alignment with the requirements of the high performance workplace. So subsequent research has been done to analyze which of those 55 criteria are really the most important. And statistical studies were done that analyzed the prevalence of those 55 criteria to identify which of those criteria across a group of companies were most highly correlated statistically with profitability, productivity, and safety in organizations, those three outcomes being most desired. And the result was that of the 55 criteria, seven were identified as most correlated to profitability, productivity, and safety. What was surprising to the researchers was that every one of those seven criteria related to the existence of teams in the organization. Did, it, did, did teams exist in the organization or not? Those organizations with team structures tended to have the highest profitability, productivity, and safety. Now, the research is ongoing, and we aren't quite sure why teams showed up as the most highly correlated to profitability, productivity, and safety. But we can speculate. And I urge you to think about it. Why would teams, the existence of teams, be most highly correlated to profitability, productivity, and safety? Well, here's my take on it. I think that in the current work environment in many organizations, where we're recovering from the pandemic. A lot of workers have worked from home and they've experienced a sense of isolation. And if you've done a search of the recent literature in business, you know the term belonging and building a sense of belonging is critically important in many organizations today. So I think teams can create, they don't normally do it if we just slap the name team on a work group of people who don't get along with each other. But if a team means that we've got a group of people who have a team spirit and they have a certain level of cohesiveness where they support each other, we build a sense of belonging and that can correlate to productivity, profitability, and safety. So I encourage you to think about the high performance workplace and what you can do to create that in your organization. Again, thank you for listening to me. If you like this presentation, please subscribe and hit the like button. And I look forward to seeing you in future webcasts.